shooting guard. Standing 5 foot 11, number 42, Chenise Johnson. Starting at the other guard, at 5 foot 9 inches, number 4, Lexi. Starting at power forward, at 6 foot 3 inches, number 12, Amir. WNBA on 2K Sports. And this game will see the Seattle Storm going up against the Minnesota Lynx. Joined by Brian Benefitemi and Tim Swartz, I'm Blake Suniga, and we are so glad you joined us tonight. And well, we all know the NBA logo is based on Jerry West, but the WNBA logo isn't based off any one player. If you guys could pick someone, who would you choose? Great question, Blake. I'm going a little bit into the future, but you know what? I think I'd pick Maya Moore. She's been to so many All-Star games, won all those championships with the Lynx. She's just a great player. Good pick, Tim, but I'm going to have to go with Diana Taurasi, the WNBA's all-time leading scorer. You can make an argument that she's the best player this league has ever seen. A three-time WNBA champion. He also has the most all WNBA first team selections in league history with 10. Outside Lloyd. Bird outside. Pass to Howard. Lloyd. Johnson defending. Yes, it's good. The body control on her is tremendous. Lloyd is not easily taken off her game. Impressive make. Brown with it. Johnson outside. Rejected by Natasha Howard. Pass to Bird. That falls. Nice speed that time from Jewel Lloyd. Shooting off the pass, it really allows you to square up, feel comfortable. Bird looked really comfortable there. Collier outside. Five to shoot, and the call will go against Jewel Roy. That is her first foul of the game. First, first. Just about two minutes into the game, first quarter of basketball. Here's Fouls, falls back and drains the fadeaway J. We know the mid-range shot isn't Fouls' favorite shot to take, but she embraces challenges and tackles them head on. Now here's Bird. Up top, Clark. Bird outside. Poked away. And it's out of bounds to the Storm as Seattle retains possession. If you're just tuning in, we've played about two and a half minutes here in the first. And that one's good. All year. Oh, the, the high degree of difficulty make from Collier. What an adjustment in body control. Pass to Clark. Howard. Goes up at the stripe. Again, Seattle. Red hot out of the gates. Four for four shooting. Now here's Dantas. Here's Fowles. And here's Collier. And so she draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. It's going to go on Alicia Clark. Great effort getting to the line from Collier. Part of what makes her so good, she can battle inside and hit those outside shots. Well, in today's game, everybody wants versatility. And I'd look no further than Nafisa Collier. 
The 6'2 rookie has transitioned smoothly out to the wing after spending most of her collegiate career as a, a four, sometimes a five. And she makes the first. Well, guys, we know about the adjustments Collier has made to her game, and that's got to require a strong mindset, right? Absolutely, Blake. Collier has embraced change with the right mindset and really tackled it head on. Anytime you see that from a rookie, you know you've got a special player in your organization. And so she hits both. Sue Bird of the Storm, pretty much a living icon for the team. She spent her entire career with them since being drafted all the way back in 2002, and she really epitomizes everything this franchise values. And that's out of bounds. Minnesota will retain possession. Just over three and a half minutes gone here in the first. Janice Johnson on the wing. Collier outside. Six to shoot. Back to Johnson. Ball's knocked loose. And that's out of bounds. Minnesota will retain the ball. And Sue Bird, a legend in the game in so many ways. Yeah, three-time champion, countless all-star appearances. I know she's on the back end of her career right now, but still a face of the league. She has meant so much to the Seattle Storm over the years. And it's the Storm with the ball. Now here is Lloyd. She's got six. Outside, Stewart. First shot, first basket. She is out of the blocks fast. Stewart's presence down low stems from her skills and finesse. She's something to watch and something to admire. Now here's Fowles. Fast to Dantas. Takes it out to Collier. Johnson outside. Over Lloyd. Johnson can't get it to go. Seattle in the lead. Stewart up top. She's guarded by Dantas. Double team on Jewel Lloyd. Now Stewart. And out of bounds, the Lynx will take it. That is an unforced error if I've ever seen one, guys. Just not an ideal pass. And the Storm making a change here. So the Lynx now. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Lloyd. That'll be her second foul of the game. And that's two fouls for her very early in this ball game, which is frustrating. And she's probably going to have to spend some time on the bench before halftime. And that'll be Minnesota's ball as it goes out of bounds. Link's able to keep the ball here. Here's Brown. No scoring yet from her, but that's likely to change. Dantas outside. Brown, guarded by Canada. Clock at four. Back to Dantas. Over Canada. Knocked away. And here comes the break. Finished off the break. The easy look off the pass from Howard. Great awareness leads to the bucket. Now Brown. Johnson outside. To Collier. Fouls. And again, no good by Minnesota. A drive by Natasha Howard. And stolen by Brown. Back to Collier. Dantas defended by Stewart. Down low. Brown. Well, the Lynx have had so many leaders during their fantastic run as a franchise, but right now, you have to say this is Maya Moore's team. And she just does so much as a leader on both ends of the floor. The first free throw is good.
and that's good as she hits both shots. And here are the storm now. Here's Canada. Wyatt so far offensively searching for her first points of the game. Bowles with the rebound. And more the versatile small forward. She can dominate in so many ways. Maya has those quick hands on defense and gets you so many extra possessions. Great spot up shooter from outside. Very hard to keep in front of you also when she drives to the basket. Yeah, I'd say that shot was well within her range. I hope so. There's nothing like a one-footer. Pass to Christmas Kelly. High post, Sylvia Fowles. Here's Bannum. Just five on the clock. Here's Brown. That one a little long. Seattle with the ball. A yeah, four-point game. Offensive board to the left side wing. Langhorn left side. Outside Canada. Shoots over fouls. Minnesota grabs the miss. And that was a difficult shot from the mid-range with the defense bearing down. Yeah, closed down on her quickly and threw off her timing. Wick come with it. Looking for her first basket still in this one. Canada. Outside Howard. Yo, yo, yo. Watch this, watch this. To the right side. Fires for three. That shot by Canada, no good. Yeah, the great shooters, they know when they've got enough opening to go for the three. I didn't think it was a bad choice there. Yeah, not very good defensive coverage that time. The team got lucky. Now here's Fouls. Here's Bannon. Up again. Great positioning on the putback. The second chance points, they're just like bonus points if you can get them. Outside Whitcomb. Outside Howard. Canada. Back to Howard. Pass to Longhorn. Here's Tuck. Canada. She's covered by Brown. A shot by Canada. No good. Yeah, that's a nifty shot selection there with the defender all over her. Absolutely. You just can't rise up over the top when she's guarding you. The ball has to go somewhere else. Now here's Canada. Here's Tuck. Outside Canada. Here's the three. There we go. Now in the scoring column with that man. She is one for four. I mean, that shot just becomes effortless for her when the defense is so relaxed like that. Now here's Christmas Kelly. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for her. Seattle leading. And here's Canada. Howard. And a great assist by Jordan Canada. And that one falls in. But you like to give maybe a degree of difficulty bonus there for Howard. Great concentration to put it through the hoop. So it's a tie game as we end the first. And back with the start of the second quarter in just a moment. Jump out ahead as we begin the second quarter. And from what we've seen from the Lynx, what's your take so far? Really putting in the work on the offensive glass. They've set the tone here early with the hustle. Now here's Christmas Kelly. Pass to Fowles. Out to the wing. Here's Bannum. And the go-ahead bucket, no good. Here's Tuck. She hasn't scored yet. That, I'm sure, will change. Russell misses. Such tough defense there against one of the better finishers in the game. Christmas Kelly outside. Pass to Bannum. Five on the clock. Fouls. And good work on the boards, and they pick up the second chance points. 
Another bucket in the paint. That's just something they have not been able to stop today. And if they want to win this game, they got to figure out how to stop it. You know, Brian, I think it's time to switch things up on D. What they've got going on right now is not getting it done. Prince's shot's good. A minute and a half gone in the second quarter. They get a hand on it. Over to the left wing. Pass to Alexander. Here's Bannum. Just five to shoot. Here's Alexander. Guarded by Canada. Here's Fowles. Got a hand on it. To the paint. Here's Prince. And no good. Had a chance to take the lead. And thinking of what it means to play tough, just absolutely excelling. Tons of playoff experience under her belt. She's not afraid to bang and bump on the court. So both teams changing it up here. She's covered by Clark. Six on the shot clock. The Lynx miss again. And Karima isn't just known for playing hard. She's known for playing smart. Yeah, with her high basketball IQ, she usually has a good grip on what the opponent is thinking. And Karima's got great recognition, which she uses to disrupt passing lanes. And it's Prince missing. Three minutes of action thus far in the second quarter. Here's Fouls. Not going to go that time. Excellent D there from Mercedes Russell. Pass to Lloyd. Here's Prince. And again, it's the storm missing. Her shooting number's slipping this quarter. Trying to get back on track. Christmas Kelly gets the bucket. Little mid-range action. Christmas Kelly needs this in her game as a six-foot forward Scoring it all parts of the court helps. Now here's Clark. She's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. They now take the lead. There is no way, and I mean no way, a player like her can be left wide open like that. Christmas Kelly with it. Covered by Lloyd. Pass to Johnson. on that one. So the storm will take it the other way. Here's Lloyd. And there's the rejection. And they get it back. The Lynx trailing. Christmas Kelly outside. Pass to Johnson. Jacks up a three. Russell pulls it in. She has slipped into a real funk here. Definitely. The basket is not looking very big to her at this point. Now here's Clark. Karina Christmas Kelly with the block. And she uses the glass on the layup. Well, if you want to score in the WNBA, you have to do a little bit of everything. Christmas Kelly has some nice driving skills. And he hits it and gets hacked. That's a three-point possibility if he can convert the free throw. Well, guys, dunks are certainly some of the most exciting plays in basketball, but you don't see them too often in the WNBA. Should the league entertain maybe the idea of lowering the rims? Well, if the players were okay with it, Blake, I think it could have some big-time benefits in terms of promoting the game because every basketball fan loves to see slam dunks. So if there's more of them, maybe it'll help the league's popularity grow. And even former MVP Elena Deladon has been an advocate of this in the past. Yeah, Brian, I think it's a slippery slope, though. I think many WNBA players want to play the same game as their male counterparts in the NBA, and they know that they're uh, certainly capable of it. But I'm all for trying new things, and it's something that, you know, that fans and players want to see. Why not give it a little test run? Pass to Russell. Back to Bird. From deep. Minnesota grabs the miss. Dantas, right side. 
doesn't get it to drop for her. Alicia Clark with the defensive effort. Inside, Stewart. And the layup's good off the glass. An attentive player who sees the floor well. Clark really understands how to distribute the rock. Brown inside, guarded by Bird. Fouls, buries it down low. Time out, time out. It's hard to find fault with anything she's doing this quarter. Well, offensively at least. Now a timeout called by Seattle. For someone that didn't play organized basketball until the eighth grade, Sylvia Fowles developed very quickly. After four years of college basketball, she left no doubt about her game. And despite being a late bloomer to some, Fowles showed the ability to score and rebound at a high level before entering the draft. Yeah, picked second overall in 2008. Tremendous on the interior, solid footwork, terrific post moves. And no question, Fowles earned every single rebound. Now here's Johnson. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. The 11-footer, and Sue Bird with a swat. Here's Clark. And she lays it straight in. A fluid athlete who runs the floor with precision. Clark makes her presence felt uh, pretty much whenever she's out on the court. Now here's Brown. She's got five. It's stolen by Sue Bird. Left side, Howard. Over Collier. Tipped away. Bodied her up and made her alter the trajectory of the shot that time. Definitely. Some very sound defense played on that trip down. To the middle. And that one's good. Foul. Well, this is where foul strives. She loves getting the ball down low, close to the hoop. Bird outside. Whitcomb. Outside, Stewart. Shot clock at six. Take it the other way. Here's Brown. And that misses. That would have put them up. Stewart. She's guarded by Dantas. Got that one up quick. That's their third straight make off an assist. And it's always good when you can score points by getting teammates involved. Yeah, that's just great ball movement. Time called here. The Lynx decide to talk it over. To the inside. Foul called that time on the way up, and that'll give her two chances at the free throw line. And it's going to be on Sammy Whitcomb. Rachel Benham. Two shots. Shooting two. And the first one at the line is good.
So after making the first, she goes one for two. Something that's kept this game close is the fact that the rebounding stats uh, for both teams are almost identical. Yeah, they've battled to a standstill on the boards, but the game isn't over yet. We'll see who keeps up the energy. Now here's Dantas. She's been patient so far, nothing yet on the scoreboard. Yeah, late reaction to the defense. She's always going to convert that. Here's Canada. They lead by one. Outside Stewart, Canada. Shot clock at five. From deep three-point range. No basket with that shot. Having trouble finding the range. She is one for five. The basket by Brown. They continue to get it inside. The defense struggling to just contain them. And look, when you make five in a row from in tight like they have, it also just takes pressure off of your perimeter, guys. Great point. Eighteen feet out. And that's not going to go. And the first half comes to a conclusion in a game that has been very close so far. Storm out in front, leading by just one. And join us right back here after the break for the start of the second half. sides have assessed what they need to do over the break and we'll see if one can pull away in the third a fantastic game from Sylvia Fowles in this one her decision making simply flawless today nothing but quality shots from her in the first half she wasn't forcing anything yeah but I think here in the second half they may want her to be a little more assertive and start taking more shots even the tough ones the third quarter now beginning. Both sides looking to pull away in the last half of the game. Now here's Brown. Guarded by Bird. Collier outside. And a foul called on the shot. Got her on the way up that time, so she'll shoot two. And guys, we all know about how important offense is in this league. But who is the best pure shooter in the WNBA? My pick is Allie Quigley. She's right around 40% from downtown for her career. That's special. And don't even get me started on her shot mechanics. I mean, I could watch her shoot all day long. Of course, you stole my pick, Ryan. Well, if it's not Quigley, it's got to be Diana Taurasi. She pairs a, a silky smooth jumper with her unwavering confidence. And the result is one of the deadliest shooters the league has ever seen. That one falls, so she hits both of them. Taken sixth overall by Minnesota in 2019, Nafisa Collier made an immediate impact in the WNBA. A real polished player who's gonna be a good one for years to come. And the shot goes in. Minnesota trailing. Now 
Now Johnson looking for her first basket still in this one. And Fouls gets it to go. Another made shot. Fowles' confidence allows her to heat up quickly. And I want to see if she can keep this up. Now here is Lloyd. Third outside. Left side, Howard. Sylvia fouls with a defensive effort. Brown with it. She's got seven. Takes it out to Collier. Pass to Dantas. Johnson covered by Lloyd. And here's Collier. The trade. They get it back to the wing on the left. Here's Brown. That shot off. Some solid defense from Sue Bird. Here's Stewart. Nice D from Nafisa Collier. Well, got it in close, but credit the tight defense for forcing the miss. Defense like that ups the degree of difficulty on that shot by about what? Uh, I'd say 300%? 308% maybe. Okay, I like that. Misses from short range. It just hasn't been an ideal start to the second half. They've missed three of their first four. Bird with it. Now Brown defending. Pass to Lloyd. Over Collier. Makes good on the step back jumper. That's what makes Lloyd so dangerous. She scores everywhere on the floor, even places like the mid range. Now here's Fowles. Guarded by Howard. They blow the whistle just as she gets it off. That's two points with a chance for another one at the strike. they say hard work pays off and Fowles is a living example of that. She became a WNBA MVP about a decade after she entered the league. You can always depend on her to put that lead pass right on the money. Pass to Collier. Now Fowles defended by Stewart. Here's Brown. And the Lynx miss again. Those have been some, some terrible shot choices, Blake. Uh, that was not good at all. Outside Lloyd. Double team on Jewel Lloyd. Bird outside. Four on the clock. Over Collier. And the Storm tack on two more. What sets Bird and other superstars apart, anybody can make an open shot. It's the difficult basket she makes. The laser focus on the hoop. Now here's Brown. She has seven. Terrific work to get in the shooter's face and then uh, go straight to the board to the rebound. Hard left side. Pass to Stewart. Howard. And it's blocked by Sylvia Fowler. Just so dominant. Fowler has won multiple defensive player of the year awards for a reason. Well, not to experience the thrill of winning a title. But uh, Howard has twice. Now, one as a role player, one as a key cog. And Shoot really, two. she was the perfect puzzle piece to her championship squads. And the first one drops. After winning it all, I think the perspective Howard gained is what will help her the most. Yeah, once you reach the top of the mountain, you start to understand what it takes. Important not to get complacent, which Howard has stayed far away from. Sometimes experience really is the best teacher. And she makes both free throws. Voted most improved player in 2018, Natasha Howard shot 55% from the field, easily set a career scoring average mark, and was on the all-defensive team. There's the foul. It's on Howard. That is her first foul of the game. So the Lynx now trailing by four. Pass to Fowles. Down to five on the shot clock. And again, no 
good by Minnesota. Here's Prince. They get it again. Controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. A worker's mentality. Howard crashes the O-boards looking for second chance points. It's Karima Christmas Kelly on the wing. Pass to fouls. Christmas Kelly. Looking to end the run. Shots good by Fouls. I mean, you have to appreciate a player like Fouls who goes hard until the ref blows the whistle. She plays inspired basketball. Time called here. The Storm decide to talk it over. Well, they want to tinker with the game plan a little bit, and now's the time to do it. Yeah, there was clearly some things going on out there that the coaching staff just wasn't a fan of. Stewart draws the double. On the wing, Sammy Whitcomb. Inside. Stolen by Christmas Kelly. Collier with it. She's against Russell. And it's blocked by Brianna Stewart. Phenomenal defense from Stewart on that play. It's no surprise she's regarded as one of the best shot blockers in the league. They carried out the plan perfectly that time around. Pass to fouls. An easy two points on the layup. He's caught fire this quarter, yet to miss. Seattle leading. Down low. Howard. And a great assist by Jordan Canada, and that one falls in. She's been one of their more reliable options today, and it's her shooting that has given them this lead. Pass to Collier. Russell pulls it in. Well, you love the tough D, especially inside. And that's exactly what she gives you, Tim. Constantly making her presence felt around the rim. Here's Minnesota. Eight-point game. Fouls with it. Guarded by Canada. And stolen by Canada. Pass to Howard. It's good, and she drew the contact on the shot, so she'll go to the line. Three-point play opportunity. On the night, she's two for two at the strike. The Storm making a switch here. Christmas Kelly. He's tightly guarded. Alexander guarded by Howard. Christmas Kelly gets the bucket. So tough, so strong. Christmas Kelly is one of the, the shorter front court players. But she uh, takes it strong when she gets inside. Good on the bucket. What a half for this offense. And if they can stay this hot, a great chance to extend the lead. You know, they're taking it up a notch, looking very confident. Now here's Collier. He's got six. Whitcomb with the steal. Huh. Outside Canada. Four on the shot clock. It's hauled in by the Lynx. And she continues to search for her rhythm. It's eluded her so far. Pass to Christmas Kelly. Collier puts up a three it's hauled in by Langhorn and the storm with possession 
They lead by 11, the largest margin of the game. And the officials whistle a foul on the shot. The bucket's good, and she'll go to the line. When you think of Brianna Stewart, you think winner. She won four college championships, has an Olympic gold medal, and a WNBA title. Here's Bannum. Here's Johnson. It's good. The second she got around the pick and shook her man, it was straight to the bucket for the easy deuce. Very well done. Now here is Canada. Langhorn. Outside, Stewart, over Collier, goes back up. So she gets the whistle, contact on the way up, two shots, next. You don't want to get in the habit of letting the offense get right to the rim. And that's the message they were sending with that foul, saying nothing easy inside with that one. Yeah, but they got to play a little bit Shoot better two. defense before they get inside. The first one falls. He's perfect from the line this time. They're working hard to get inside and draw contact a little more than they did in the first half, Tim. You know, and defensively, if you're trying to battle back, you can't keep sending them to the line. Doesn't go that time. Now Seattle takes it the other way. A slight rebound advantage for them. One more column in their favor. It's all adding up. Yes. Well, you look across the team stats, it's one of many areas they're winning, and they've secured a big lead. They've looked very sharp tonight. I'm loving it. Here's Bannum. Here's Dantas. Oh, hammer! Wow! She'll go to the line. That's her first trip to the line. Shooting for your Minnesota Lynx. Damiris Dantas at the line for two. Doesn't get the second. And here's Canada. And released it in time, but it's off the mark. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may be difficult to overcome. Storm out in front, up by 15. And after a quick break, we're coming right back with the start of the fourth quarter. And it's time to bring up the State Farm assist of the game. Oh, this was some artistry right here. Great decision on where to go with the ball and a perfect delivery. And they'd love to see every possession end this way, Tim. It's true team basketball. It's just so much fun to watch. Welcome back, fourth quarter of action starting up in what has been a one-side show. And it's out of bounds to the Storm as Seattle retains possession. Block at six. Lloyd. Trifecta! You know, back her rookie year, she shot around 20% from downtown, but Lloyd has put incredible effort to improve her long-range shot. Now she's close to a 40% shooter. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Jordan Canada. 
That'll be her second foul of the game. Here's Johnson. Collier outside. Pass to Brown. Just five on the clock. Over Canada. Right now, she can't buy a bucket and just shooting the ball poorly. But if she can just stay poised, I'm confident she can bounce back. And it's pretty hard not to notice the difference in the passing of these two teams today. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the stats monitor, there's a stark discrepancy. When you look at the assist column, and you see that difference as far as fluidity in their respective offenses, too. Now here is Lloyd. Double team on Jewel Lloyd. Pass to Longhorn. It's hauled in by the Lynx. Final quarter here, and we're just over a minute and a half through it. Now here's Brown. And here's Collier. Guarded by Canada. Johnson outside. Crystal Langhorn with the defensive effort. On the wing, Jewel Lloyd. Basket counts. Remember, for her career, Lloyd's at about 15 per game, so scoring buckets in bunches, it's old habit. Here's Johnson. That one's off, still out of sync. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's been the result for her over and over. I mean, she just cannot find the bottom of the bucket. Those defenders look a little bit gassed. I mean, they're just getting pushed around on the low block. Maybe coach has got to make a substitution or something to energize this team. Well, they better rally soon. They've given up three straight buckets in the paint. Now a timeout called by Minnesota. They'd seen enough scoring in the paint and wanted to send a message to their team. Lock things up inside. Yeah, you're right, Tim. I guarantee you this talk centers around cutting down on all those points coming against them in the paint. And maybe it's more help. It's the front of player. They've got to try something. So both teams making some changes here. Just over two and a half minutes played now. Final quarter of regulation. Now here's Brown. Pass to Fouls. Off hits the rebound. Yeah, a player who seemingly welcomes contact. Fouls is physical and earns herself a trip to the line. Shooting for your Minnesota Lynx. Sylvia Fouls. Taking two shots. Two. Two. And she can't get the first one. Good on the second free throw. And we're about three minutes into the fourth quarter now. Bird outside. He can't get it to go. Brown up top. She's covered by Clark. Pass to Fouls. Lays it up and in off the nice reverse. She's been a real positive factor. Though, as a team, they're still falling a bit short there. Bird with it. Out to the wing. Here's Lloyd. A beautiful reverse layup. Scoring inside. Lloyd able to do it despite being under six feet. Now here's Brown. Guarded by Bird. Pass to Dantas. Crystal Langhorn with the defensive effort. Howard, she's covered by Brown. She did double duty right there. 
influence the shot and clean the glass. Oh. Knocked loose, stolen by Clark. And it's out of bounds for the storm as Seattle retains the bounds. Bird. Clark outside to the left wing. Fades. Russell. She's guarded by Dantas. Russell. That one, no good. The Lynx go the other way with it. Brown with it. Pass to Johnson. Back to Brown. Shot clock at six. Oh. And count it. Two points with a chance for one more at the line. storm now. The biggest lead of the game was 24 points. Pass to Stewart. The basket good off the assist from Sue Bird. Dropping dimes. Bird has incredible vision and feel. She sees the whole court. Dantas outside. Johnson fouls. Shots good by Dantas. She's got a great read of where that miss was going, and that enabled her to be the first player to it and get the put back. And basket is good. Got it to go through the contact. So a free throw coming up. Opportunity for a three-point play. One shot. Seventeenth pick in the 2010 WNBA draft. Clark has carved out a nice career for herself. I like her game. Now here's Brown. Here's Bannum. Pass to fouls. Just four to shoot. Over Howard. Good on the seven-footer. Well, she's scoring most of their points, but she can't score them all. She needs some help if they're going to come back. Here's Lloyd. Up and in. That's her 10th make in the contest. And she's only taken 13 shots to get there. Now fouls. Shoots over Bird. Out of bounds. It'll go to the storm. There's no excuse for that turnover. That's just a straightforward pass gone wrong. And the storm making a change here. Shot misses. Some solid defense from Demiris Dantas. Ask him around. Dantas with it. Soft touch off the glass. Here's Seattle. And here is Canada. Here's Lloyd. Good, and Jordan Canada gets the assist. She's finding all kinds of ways to get it going right now. What a quarter she's having. Pass to Bantam. Storm with the rebound. Now here is Canada. Outside Lloyd. And here is Howard. Stewart. He's guarded by Dantas. Just five to shoot. Brianna Stewart draws the double. Oop, there's the 24 second violation, so they'll turn it over. And here are the Lynx now. Time called here. The Lynx decide to talk it over. 
One of the stories here, Lloyd is getting it done today. She is on fire on a major roll today. That timeout desperately needed. They've got to come up with a new game plan right now to slow her down. Are you going to give it to the buckets been a tractor beam for her shots all night regardless of where she's shooting from or what's standing in front of her i think she got an extra lift from the away fans tonight guys they were letting her have it but she responded with one of her best outings dantas outside pass to fouls Oh, you're with it. Six to shoot. Back to fouls. And him. Over Lloyd. And the Lynx miss again. Now here is Canada. She's covered closely. Here's Stewart. Covered by fouls. Clark, right side. Back to Stewart. Rebounded by Sylvia Fowles. Pass to Bannum. Over Howard. Bannum's shot is good. Now Canada. Clark outside. Outside Stewart. Now here is Canada. Covered by Fowles. To the paint. Here's Lloyd. Bannum with the rebound. Well, good defense in the paint, worth its weight in gold. It absolutely is, and we just saw it right there, didn't we? Without her presence, that's an easy two points. Here's Bannum. Collier outside. Bullseye! Nails it! Well, their offense is kicking the gear, but it's come just a little too late. I think it may be, but at least they're finally showing some signs of life offensively, but... Too bad it's past the point where it'll do them much good. Yeah, absolutely. Stewart with the ball. And so Seattle takes this one by a big margin. And this crowd was stunned by the manner in which their team was dismantled. Boy, I mean, for us, too, it was shocking. I don't care what the matchup is. You never expect a road team to come in and just cruise to the type of win they had tonight. That'll do it for our broadcast, everyone.